two OHs. Next thing I notice if I've doubled the OHs and I have two hydrogens as well. What if I were to double the water on the right side? We'd have two OHs and two H's. And I think we've got it. Always good to check your work. Two K's? Yep. Two OH's? Oh yeah. Two hydrogens? Indeed. And one unit of sulfate balances this equation. The pattern here is a double replacement. First pattern we saw was a decomposition. It said the word decompose right in the pattern. We'll read on to number three. When a piece of zinc is dropped into a tube with hydrochloric acid, hydrogen gas is given off, and aqueous zinc chloride is left in the tube. So our first reactant is zinc. Zinc is a metal written as Zn. It would be in the solid phase. Is dropped into a test tube with, there's finally the plus sign, hydrochloric acid. Hydro root word ic comes from hydrogen chloride, HCl, hooked by charge. And again, acids are always, always aqueous. Dissolved in water. Acids are solutions dissolved in water. We have our arrow that separates reactants and products. The first product listed is hydrogen gas being given off. Well, hydrogen is also one of that lucky seven diatomic molecular compounds, horses need oats club, and it's written as H2 when it's by itself. The word and is a plus sign. An aqueous zinc chloride. Zinc, based on our periodic table, is a plus two. We wrote that in the box. Chloride is a minus one. So we're hooking plus two with a minus one. And we come up with ZnCl2 aqueous. Again, aqueous zinc chloride left in the tube. We'll balance. And I like to put my coefficient lines in front of the reactants and products. And I'm just going to count. We have one zinc on each side, looking good. But I notice two H's and two CL's on the right-hand side. We'll need to double our HCl to balance our equation. Now this particular pattern, just so we can practice, we have an element with a compound making a new element with a compound. This is called a single replacement reaction, where zinc kicks out, displaces, or exchanges places with the hydrogen, a single replacement reaction. Zinc kicking out hydrogen, making the new element, and stealing its partner, hooking by charge. We'll read our fourth example. When phosphoric acid is heated strongly, Water vapor is given off. Diphosphorus pentaoxide is left as a solid residue. I'm heating an acid, giving off two products. Given off is indicating that it will be on the right side of our arrow as a product. We'll need to begin by writing an acid. I'm seeing an ic ending. Ic comes from the polyatomic eight we find the phosphate polyatomic ion. It's PO4 with a minus three. Hydrogen is a plus one. Phosphate, we just found minus three. Phosphoric acid is H3PO4. We've also been saying acids are always aqueous. We're heating strongly. There's the triangle on my arrow. Water vapor is given off. Water is written as H2O. Putting my coefficient lines in. And diphosphorus pentaoxide left as a solid residue. You know, the word water vapor indicates the state of matter as a gas. So I can add that in. A decomposition pattern 
where I have one reactant breaking down into simpler pieces. We need to balance as well. You might need a T-chart. What I notice though, just by looking, I have phosphorus in one location, two P's on the right and only one P on the left. I would suspect that I'm going to need to start by doubling the reactant. That gets the P's to behave, two P's on each side. What that also did was to say two times three, I now have six hydrogens. I can repair the hydrogens by placing a three in front of the water. Two times four is eight oxygens. Three plus five is eight oxygens. We've balanced this by putting a two to three to one ratio. A decomposition. We have one more to go and it's number five. Dropping the white powder, sodium oxide, into water produces an alkaline solution. Alkaline is just another word to say the word base. The opposite of an acid is a base. Maybe you've heard the term alkaline batteries. You put it in your calculator, your iPod, or so forth. The alkaline solution that's being made is sodium hydroxide. Well, let's begin by looking up sodium oxide. That looks like our reactant, sodium oxide. Sodium with its plus one charge, oxide with its minus two charge. Our first reactant will be sodium oxide, and based on charge, we have Na2O. Saying it's a white powder really is just adding the adjective that it is solid. Dropping is saying we're adding it to, reacting it with. Dropping sodium oxide into water is saying these two will combine together. Sodium oxide in water, water will be in its liquid form. Produces is the arrow, and it's a solution indicating that it's aqueous, something dissolved in water, makes sense in our equation. Sodium hydroxide, so the oxide went to hydroxide. Pay attention to those words, it's oxide to begin with, but it's hydroxide as a product the polyatomic OH negative. Sodium with its plus charge, hydroxide with its minus charge, we get NaOH, and it's aqueous. We'll need to balance. Two Na's, two H's, 